In Health Watch, doctors in China are testing out using electronic brain implants to treat drug addiction. The Associated Press gives us a look at Yan's story. He's the first patient to undergo this clinical trial of deep brain stimulation, or DBS. It's a medical procedure that has been used for movement disorders and OCD, but doctors now hope it could also treat addiction. Mm -hmm. Erica Kienetz is the Shanghai correspondent for the Associated Press and the author of that article, and she joins us now. Um, this, Erica, is such a fascinating story. Explain to our viewers how this medical procedure works. So basically, it's a two-step surgery. First, they implant electrodes in the brain. And, and for addiction, they're targeting a little area at the base of the forebrain. And then they implant a battery pack in the chest, which powers the electrodes to deliver electrical stimulation to the brain. It's a little bit like a pacemaker for the brain. So has it been successful? What are the studies looking like right now? These are very early days. So there were some initial studies done in Europe that kind of fell apart because they had a lot of trouble recruiting patients. China is emerging as a hub for this kind of research, but there's still only very small numbers. So it's too early to draw any conclusions, really. So Erica, as you can imagine, whenever there's a new medical technology innovation in the medical field, there are people who have concerns about it. So what are the critics saying about this particular surgery? Critics are saying it's way too early to start experimenting in humans with this. It still is a little bit unclear the biology of addiction, where should the, which part of the brain should be stimulated. Most of the research that's funded by the U.S. government to use DBS for addiction is still being done in animals. And China has been able to move ahead much faster with human studies than the United States has. But we mentioned uh, in the throw to you that it's been used before to treat other things like OCD. I, I actually recall hearing about this sort of treatment, I think, for sort of clinical depression. And one of the issues with the patient that I was uh, reading about was that at times, um, over time, it stopped working and she needed a stronger and stronger sort of, um, whether, whether it was a charge or whatever the case may be. Do we know about whether or not this could work over a long stretch of time? I think that's a great question. There were two very large-scale depression studies um, looking at if DBS could be used to heal depression, and both of those studies fell apart. Um, there were questions about the way the study was designed and whether the basic science was developed enough to really design a good clinical trial. So I think there at this point are still so many questions, it's really impossible to know. Hmm. So um, we've obviously heard of other medical devices like pacemakers, for example, that have been hacked. Uh, is this something that could be hacked? It's not a connect. Well, actually, it is a connected device. It was fascinating to watch the doctor adjust the DBS device in the patient Yen. They were sitting across from each other, and the doctor had this little tablet computer, and he was remotely adjusting the device in Yen's head. And he changed the settings. Yen would say, "Wow, I feel happy and cheerful now," or "Wow, I feel anxious," or "Wow, now I'm sweating." So, I guess anytime you have connectivity, there is some small amount of risk. But again, these are very early days. Mm. So the other thing that sort of concerns me when I hear about a study like this being done in China, and there were attempts, you know, in other countries, but they weren't able to get enough uh, human beings who were willing to put themselves in that situation. You know, China is a communist country. China is a country where, you know, often people are forced to do things that ag against their will. And I don't know how, what's, what the history is in terms of the treatment of drug addicts in China, but do we know that the participants are 100% voluntary? In this case, it was definitely voluntary. This patient found the hospital himself. But I think you raise a very good point, because the whole context for drug addiction and drug treatment is very, very different in China. And in fact, for years, um, doctors in China used ablation surgery, where they actually permanently destroyed cells in the brains of drug, drug addicts to try to cure their addiction to heroin. And this became a big scandal in China. And in 2004, the government shut the practice down at most hospitals. So China does have a long history of using brain surgery to treat addiction in a way that we don't, certainly don't have in the United States. Well, you know, if this can make a difference, it would be transformative um, for so many people, especially in this country. Question is, will it ever make it to this country? Yeah, exactly. Erica Knetz, thank you so much. Thank you.